Hallelujah. We welcome you to the Back to Basics online church where you don't even have to get up and go out to the cold or the snow or the ice or face the traffic or rush to get across town to be in that favorite seat at the corner of Second and Main, but you can stop right where you are and say, you know, I can join the Worship Where I Am Church this morning. I can go to Back to Basics Ministries online and get me some word, because that's what you're going to get. You're going to get some word here. Praise God. I thank God for counting me worthy of this calling. I thank God for all of you. I see my children on today. Hey, kids, God bless you. So glad to see you and your families online. I see uh, my friend Tammy Nichols online. Praise God. The Lord stopped the snow enough in Ohio that she can get online. Praise God. We thank God for Dr. Andrew, Andrew McBride. We thank God for our friends overseas in Kenya, Nigeria, Ghana, all over the world. People are listening live and they're getting blessed by the word of God. And God is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh all over this nation, all over this world. This is an online church. And the purpose for this online church is to reach out to you and to encourage you and to let you know that God loves you. God cares about you. God has a plan for your life. And as you uh, continue coming on Sunday after Sunday, I believe you're getting blessed. I'm getting reports that you're getting blessed. And God is building his spirit in each of you. God's got a plan for you. Praise God. I'm just here uh, temporarily to stand in the gap while God prepares you for the work he's got for you. He doesn't want you staying at home doing nothing, watching cartoons on Sunday morning or playing Xbox games. God wants you worshiping him and fellowshipping with him. So as you continue pressing your way into his presence, God is going to reward you because the scripture says he is the rewarder of them who diligently seek him. The online church, we stand in the gap and we assist the brick and mortar church. We assist the body of Christ. We are united with the body of Christ. We are not a separate entity trying to divide people. We're trying to bring people together in the name of Jesus. We're trying to send out a message to the whole world that Jesus Christ is coming back soon and he wants you to be saved. He wants you to be ready. Many of you listening in are saved. God wants you to be ready. He wants you to be ready because he's about to crack through the sky. And so the online church, the Back to Basics Ministries online church, we're here to feed you the word of God, to encourage you to fellowship with God, to encourage you to worship God, encourage you to keep your eyes on Jesus, encouraging you to stay in the word. Ladies and gentlemen, it is so important that you stay in God's plan. Don't let anything or anybody distract you or remove you from the will of God. Satan is so slick and he's so organized. He is highly organized and he's working 24 seven to draw people into his kingdom, to remove them from the presence of God. He's very effective. He's trying to divide the church and we've got to take a stand and say, oh no, the church will not be divided. A house that is divided against itself, cannot stand. And so you and I, even though we may not be regular participants in the brick and mortar church, we must support our brothers and sisters in the brick and mortar church. We must support the born again believers. Everybody in church is not saved, but we've got to pray for them and believe that they will be saved. Going to church does not mean that you're saved. Going to church will not save you. Worshiping God in the name of Jesus and receiving Jesus Christ 
as your Savior and Lord. That's what gets you saved. And so I just want to reach out to all of my teammates today. We're on the same team. We're practicing on the same team. We're worshiping on the same team. We're worshiping Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Lord God Almighty, who died on the cross, who was buried. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he's about ready. Any moment now, any day now, he may crack through the sky. And if he comes and you're not ready, there will be no other opportunity. So that is why we encourage you, gather your family around the phone. Uh, gather your family around your computer. Gather your family at the um, internet church. And for the next several minutes, pay attention to what's being said. Don't go in and out of the ministry. Don't uh, get angry and get off, you know, because I preach the gospel. I preach the gospel. It's tight, but it's right. I see some folks, they come in, and if I say something that uh, grabs them the wrong way, they get offline. They go out in the kitchen. They go out and get a cup of coffee. Then they might come back. They may not. But ladies and gentlemen, that is not the way to stay in the presence of God. You've got to take it when it hurts. You've got to take it when it feels good. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, you signed up for the team. When you ask Jesus Christ to come into your life, you signed up for the team. That means since you signed up for this team and Jesus Christ is the head coach, you've got to let the coach coach you the way he wants to. On the Back to Basics online church, the coach asked me to shape up the team. The coach, the Lord Jesus Christ, called me to start the Back to Basics online church. And he has asked me to get you in shape, to help get you in shape for the big game, the big game, not the playoff, not the Super Bowl, but the big game. He's about to come back and he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. So my job is to help get you in shape. My job is to preach the gospel, not some uh, tickly, ear tickling sermon, not some uh, dissertation I wrote, not to stroke you, not to make you feel good. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm not here to get you to like me on Facebook. I don't care if you never like me on Facebook. It's not about Facebook likes. It's about preaching the gospel and getting you to the place where you trust the Lord God because we're living in the last days. These are easy days. I had a woman last week told me she won't she won't follow me anymore because of what I preach. Well, that's her decision. You don't have to follow me. You don't have to like me. I'm here to preach the gospel, here to help get your soul saved, help you to make some decisions for Jesus. Praise God. And I'm not going to be a punk about it. I'm going to say what thus saith the Lord. And another thing, I had someone criticize me last I don't like the way you preach. I don't like, like the way you talk about my president, Donald Trump. Hey, there's a time when preachers have to preach and help get Trump right. Ladies and gentlemen, Trump is not your God, and Trump needs Jesus just like every one of us. So ladies and gentlemen, don't uh, throw rocks at the mailman. I'm the mailman. I'm bringing you good news. Sometimes you open a letter, the letter might not say what you want it to say. But look at the whole package. Look at the delivery system. You know that this ministry is consistent. We come week after week after week with love. We come with power and demonstration in the Holy Spirit to let you know that God loves you. And ladies and gentlemen, I was thinking earlier today, and the Lord put this in my spirit. This is only church that some of you can attend. This is the only church going to put up with some of y'all, some of your mess. This is the only church going to put up with you. You've tried church after church. You hop from church to church. You've started confusion. You got mad at that preacher. You left in a huff. But this is the only church that, hey, I'm going to put up with you because I can outlast you. Until Jesus calls me home, I can outlast you. I can outlast your madness. I cannot outlast your anger. 
I can outlast your bitterness because the spirit of the Lord is in me. God's filled me with his love and he's given me endurance. It's his endurance. The spirit of the Lord is in me. I must preach the gospel. I'm not going to stop preaching the gospel to stroke you because you want to hear something soft and easy. You want something like ice cream that's going to go down easy. Sometimes what God gives me is going to be bitter for you to taste because God wants you to get right. So welcome all over Africa, all over Asia, all over Europe. Hey, Memo Derezio, all my friends in Belgium, my friends in the Netherlands, John and Emily, my friends in Paris, France, my friends in South America, in Guyana, my friends in uh, Colombia, my friends in uh, North and South America, our friends in Canada. We worship God and all over the United States. I greet you. I greet our Facebook friends and we thank God for you. So for the next few minutes, let's just sit back. Let's get ready. Let's hear what the coach has given us for our session today. Let's see what kind of workout the coach has for us. It might be crunches. It might be wind sprints. It might be push-ups. It might be chalkboard talk. It might be whiteboard talk. It might be running uh, distance. It might be throwing some passes. It might be catching, catching some passes. Or it might be just sitting and listening to the word of God. Let's see what the coach has put in the game plan for today. By the way, make sure you are coachable. A lot of Christians are losing it, losing power, losing their anointing, losing their position. They're not standing their ground because they're not coachable. When you sign up for this team, you say, I want to be born again. I want to be saved. And God sends you a pastor. God sends you to a church. Then you need to be alert and you need to check yourself. You need to tell yourself, I am coachable. I am coachable. I'm going to let this man or woman whom God put in my life teach me because that's what we do. We've been called. Preachers like me, we've been called. Ladies and gentlemen, every preacher out there has not been called. You've got to be careful of wolves in sheep's clothing. You've got to know who's real and who's not real. You've got to know how to test the spirit by the spirit. If you don't read your Bible for yourself, a preacher can tell you anything. I see friends on the social media. They hear this. They hear that. They run with this. They run with that. They chat this. They tweet this. And, and it's not right. They heard it from some preacher. Ladies and gentlemen, everything coming out of a preacher's mouth is not of God. You need to test the spirit by the spirit. Even test this spirit by the spirit of God. You've got to line up the word that we preach with the word of God. Check it with the Bible. You've got to go back to your Bible, check and double check. You need to re look, revisit the tapes, the videos and say, did he preach what God gave him? And if it doesn't uh, agree with you, if you don't agree with it, you check it out with the word of God. Some of you are getting bent out of shape because you can't take the word of God. Well, the coach puts these plans in the game plan, and I preach what thus saith the Lord. I'm not here to stroke you. I'm here to help you. And if you're ready to receive some help, that's what I do. That's what I'm called to do. Praise God. Been doing this for over 40 years, helping people to get into the kingdom of God. And then once they're into the kingdom of God, we put you in a training program so that you can learn your scripture, so you can learn how to pray, how you can lay hands on the sick, lay hands on yourself when you get sick, how you can live healthy and happy in the presence of the Lord, and how you can endure temptation. There are days when you're going to get knocked down, but you've got to get back up. That's why you need a coach. But coach, don't put me in. I don't want to play today. No, no. There are times when the coaches say, get back in there. Get back up in there. Don't you lay there in that puddle of confusion. You get back up there and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord of your life and declare that the devil is a liar. You get back up there and resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Well, praise God. 
all that introduction. I'll take 10 more minutes with the message and we'll uh, share the message that God has today. It's going to bless you. It is going to bless you. Already the words that I've spoken have been a blessing. So let's just ask the Holy Spirit to continue using and anointing this service today. I'm believing that your household is going to change. I'm believing God's going to visit you today and do some mighty things. I praise God. I believe God. I believe God to heal somebody who's sick. I believe God to heal and deliver somebody who's bound. So stick with the game plan. Let the coach, we're talking about Jesus Christ. He's the head coach. We signed up for his team. Let the coach put us in training and get us ready uh, for that great day when he comes back. Praise God. Thank you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We thank you for your people all over this nation, all over this world who are listening in to this service today. Oh God, we give you the glory and the honor for counting us worthy of this calling for this ministry that is reaching out to touch people's lives in your name. Now, Lord, stretch forth your mighty hand. Go up in the chest of Pennsylvania. Bring healing, God, uh, to the Martin household. Go over to uh, uh, Pennsville, New Jersey. Bless my son and his family. Go up into Connecticut. Bless Andrew McBride. Go into Ohio and bless Tammy Nichols and all her friends. Go into Chesapeake, Maryland and bless Jen Ryder. Bless Elijah in Kenya. Bless Boycott in Kenya. Bless all the people in Kenya. Bless all the people in Tanzania. Bless all the people in Europe, God. All the people in South America. Lord God, bless our people whose names I can't even call, who will listen to the videos and will put their trust in the Lord. Move throughout this nation. Bless our president. Bless our Congress, God. Bless our government, Lord God. Open the eyes of the American people, Lord. Help them to realize that you're trying to help them, oh God. Help them to open their eyes and commune with you. And we thank you, Father. Now, Lord, rebuke the devourer. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We command that you take your hands off this ministry and off these people. Devil, you're a liar. The Lord rebuke you. Now, Father, prove yourself on the behalf of the people. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Set free. Lord, give jobs and promotions. Give homes to the homeless. Meet every need, Lord God. And we thank you. We give you the glory. Give us the endurance, God, the patience to wait day by day and to do your will, God, despite opposition, despite the things we encounter, despite sickness. Help us to press into your presence day after day and to worship you and commune with you and not let anything separate us from you. And we thank you, Father, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, bless God, we want to look at this subject today. What is truth? We're only going to be a couple minutes with this. What is truth? We're looking at scriptures such as John 18, 38, John 8, 32, John 14, 6. And then we're going to take a look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, verses 9 through 12. We want to look at this subject today. What is truth? What is truth? And what can you find? Where can you find it? People today seem to have a problem with the truth. In America, there is an epidemic. An epidemic of lying and fake news. People are having trouble discerning what is the truth and what isn't the truth. I know people who don't even look at the news anymore because they're confused. They don't know what is truth and what's not true. Some folks cannot trust CNN. They cannot trust uh, uh, Fox News. They can't trust uh, their local newscast. They cannot Trust channel 10, channel, channel 6, channel 49, channel 888. They can't trust uh, journalists. They can't trust reporters. 
There are people having trouble, ladies and gentlemen, with the truth. And this fake news thing is blowing people's minds. This fake news is disrupting a lot of people's lives. And the thing that grieves me, and I really believe it grieves the Lord, is the fact that Christians are so gullible. Many believers are so gullible. They get stuff off the social media, whether it's a tweet, whether it's a page, whether it's a, a, a phone call, or they get stuff and they run with it. Without checking out the source, they run with it. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And Christians ought not to be spreading lies. Some of you are spreading lies and you don't even know it because you have not checked out the source from where you got that information. And so many people, I, I get sick and tired. Hey, look, I get sick and tired and tired and sick and sick and tired of people sending me instant messages or uh, text messaging me or a message saying, make this go viral. Look. I'm not going to make anything you send me go viral because, first of all, I'm going to check out the source. And a lot of it is something somebody sent to you. And you didn't check out the source. We need as believers, we need to know the truth. And the truth shall make us free. Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? Jesus said to Pontius Pilate, I am the truth. You're looking at the truth. Pilate was so confused. He looked at that crowd out there crying for Jesus to be crucified. And Pilate went and washed his hands and said, I find no fault in this man. He's telling the truth. And ladies and gentlemen, Pontius Pilate was a politician. He had to deal with a lot of politicians who trumped up charges against, that was a pun, who trumped up charges against Jesus to make him look bad for the purpose of killing Jesus. But Pontius Pilate looked at Jesus and said, what is truth? Jesus said, I'm the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, as believers, we need to commune with God. We need to seek God's face. We need to learn how to hear from God. We need to do more now than ever before in history to enter into God's presence, hear God's voice, and discern what is truth and what is fake news. Because Satan is specializing in telling lies, and he's deceiving the very elect. Look at what the Lord says in his word in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verses 9 through 12. Listen carefully. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible warns us about having a love for lies and for not receiving the truth. The Bible declares that there are people who would rather hear lies than to hear the truth. This passage in 2 Thessalonians lets us know that Satan is operating with signs and power and lying wonders to deceive the people of God. He's already deceived the world. People believe him. But the sad thing is the number of Christians, the number of people who claim Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord, who promote Satan's lies because most of them are too blessed God lazy to trust the scripture, and to check the word they hear with the word of God. And then there are so many Christians 
who have not been taught and many are just too lazy to go into prayer, to go into your prayer room. Before you make something go viral, before you uh, retweet something, before you put this message on your page, before you call somebody, check out the source of the information that you receive. Don't perpetuate a lie. Many people are perpetuating lies and don't realize it. But God is telling us to be wise as serpents and meek like doves. And the scripture says, the scripture makes it plain, ladies and gentlemen, that if we continue to love to hear lies and hear confusion and hear falsehoods and hear untruths, if we continue in this, God will send us strong delusion that we might believe the lie. Ladies and gentlemen, if God sends strong delusion that we would rather receive the lie than the truth, then we're in deep trouble. And ladies and gentlemen, I think that's where America is right now. I think that's where America is right now. When I preached last week and we hit the nail right on the head about what uh, our president said about certain people and their lifestyles and where they come from, people got angry with me. But ladies and gentlemen, as Christians, if you're a believer, stuff like that isn't going to come out of your mouth. Stuff like that. I felt ashamed just mentioning the word in my sermon. But if you're a true believer, full of the Holy Spirit, full of the love of Christ, and if you're on Jesus' team, you're not going to entertain that kind of stuff, whether it's being tweeted to the masses or whether it's being spoken, whether it's being spoken through a press conference or, or on the golf course, you are not going to accept the stuff that's coming out of our leaders' mouths and the cover-up and the lies they're using to cover up. Uh, we've got an attorney general. He just can't remember when he's asked, when he was asked uh, by a committee, uh, I have no recollection. I, I have no recall. Well, what's he doing in office if he can't recall? Ladies and gentlemen, we got liars, liars in Washington, D.C., in your state, in, in uh, from the White House to my house. Liars, ladies and gentlemen. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Ladies and gentlemen, the scripture says that all liars will wind up in the lake of fire. So don't get mad at me for preaching the gospel. Well, if you do, I don't care because I'm going to preach it anyhow. But ladies and gentlemen, Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Pontius Pilate had enough sense to know that Jesus was innocent. And Pontius Pilate said, I wash my hands of this matter. I turn him back over to you. And he said to the crowd, what shall I do with Jesus? And they said, crucify him. Pontius Pilate knew in his heart that Jesus Christ was innocent. But Pontius Pilate was a weak man. He would not take a stand for righteousness. He would not tell the crowd that, that I'm not going to release him. He released him. And the sad thing in this country, ladies and gentlemen, we've got so many Christians so caught up in politics, so caught up in the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, that now the Democratic Party is their God and the Republican Party is their God or the White House is their God. The Bible teaches us we should not pray with idols in our heart. You shall have no other gods before me. Jesus is Lord. And ladies and gentlemen, it's sad in the church when church folks, believers, born again by the Spirit of God, would rather follow leaders who espouse hatred and racism and spew all kinds of verbal garbage out of their mouths. We've got Christians following them, and we've got Christians who will defend people like that rather than defend a preacher who preaches the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, what is truth? What is truth? That's our message today. What is truth? God says that if we will not accept the truth, he will send strong delusion, 
strong delusion, ladies and gentlemen, that means he will commit this nation to Satan. He will commit this nation to the lies of the devil. He will commit this nation to whatever Satan puts forth. He will he will allow he will allow the TV stations, uh, the news media, the social media to be in the grips and the ownership of Satan. And Satan uh, will will command what goes over the airwaves, the TV waves, the internet, because God's people will not take a stand and say, "I'm only going to honor the truth." And how do we know what is truth? Well, first of all, you test the spirits by the spirit. If that person speaking is not of God, how can that person be telling you the truth? Does that person have a relationship with Jesus Christ? It is only through the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, that we get truth. Oh, we can get truth through science. We can get truth through experiments. We can get truth, but true, real truth comes from God. How do we know? Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus said, I am truth. He told Pontius Pilate. He told his disciples. He's telling us he is the truth. And so if you're following somebody who is not connected with Jesus, oh, I'm not talking about one of these quasi, semi, pseudo Christians. There are a lot of people who know how to work a crowd. A lot of politicians know how to work a crowd. There are preachers in the pulpit right now all over America, all over Europe, all over Africa, all over Asia. They're working the crowd. They know how to work the crowd. They know the things to say. They know the, the, the latest expressions, the shibboleths to use. They know what gyrations to use. They know what turned the crowd on. And the masses because most Christians do not study the word for themselves. Most Christians do not have a prayer life or being snowed under by Satan. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to wake up and smell the coffee. Wake up and smell the coffee. Wake up and get saved. Wake up and call upon the name of the Lord. Wake up and call upon the name of Jesus and ask Jesus Christ to reveal the truth to you. I'm so glad uh, to be the dean of the Paul Begley School of Prophecy. And the very first course we offer in that school is called Communion with God. Ladies and gentlemen, we just finished our first semester and we've got scores of people who finished that course who can testify. I thought I knew God. I'm born again. I thought I knew God and I thought I knew God's voice. But this course, Communion with God, has taken me to a new level. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited. I'm excited because we're teaching a course and we're teaching believers how to commune with God, how to hear his voice, how to discern his voice, how to get answers for your questions how to seek the Lord for yourself. And we're teaching believers not to depend on others to bring God's word to you. It's time that believers stop waiting from Sunday to Sunday to hear a word from the Lord. Six days a week, many of you are being defeated because you don't know God's voice. You don't know how to receive his voice. But we're teaching in this course. And this course is revolutionizing people's lives and now they're able to go and teach others how to hear God's voice, how to discern, how to discern what is fake, what is real, and how to stay in the presence of God. It's life-changing and if any of you want to enroll in this school or, or monitor this course, you need to get in touch with me because I'm a witness. I took the course before we taught it. It has changed me. It has changed me. And I thank God, I thank God for teaching me how to discern and how to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. God is teaching us 
how to approach him with any situation, any circumstance that comes upon us. And if you don't know whether a situation is true, you can go to God for yourself and wait on him and he will speak to you and he'll reveal to, to you what the truth is. Ladies and gentlemen, it behooves you to know the truth because we're in an age where things are going to get worse. The lying spirits have been released. The spirits of deception have been released. And God says in his word, if my people continue to rather listen to lies and not the truth, I'll turn them over to strong delusion. Ladies and gentlemen, God is a jealous God. He does not want to turn you over to strong delusion. He wants you to be in his kingdom so he can show you his glory, so he can use you to the praise of his glory. And when he comes back, he'll take you with him into glory. Ladies and gentlemen, don't let anything or anyone separate you from the love of God. But just like on any team, when I played football and baseball and basketball back in the day, I had to have a teachable spirit. When I served in the Green Berets, I had to have a teachable spirit to learn those survival skills. And as a pastor, a child of God, called to preach to God's people and to lead God's people, I have to have a teachable spirit. As a father, I had to have a teachable spirit. As a father, I made many mistakes. As a husband, I've made many mistakes. I've had to go to God and repent and to learn how to do things. You never get too old to learn. Ladies and gentlemen, check your attitude. Do you have a teachable spirit? Can God teach you? Some of you don't attend the brick and mortar church anymore. Some of you just got fed up about some of the pathetic things that are going on. Some of you just got angry with someone. Someone rubbed you the wrong way. But maintain a teachable spirit, even if you're not attending church. Attend the online church, but come with the right spirit. I preach the gospel to the praise and glory and honor of God. I would not want to preach anything but the gospel. I fear God. Ladies and gentlemen, let this ministry be a blessing to you. And take a stand. Take a stand for truth. Take a stand for what is true. Don't take a stand politically because you're a Republican or you're a Democrat. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of folks are going to go down with the Republican ship. A lot of folks are going to go down with the Democratic ship. A lot of folks have compromised their principles and they put party before the truth of God. Ladies and gentlemen, we all need to repent. We need to repent for entertaining false doctrines, false truths. We need to repent for listening to voices that were not of God. And then we need to re repent for being too lazy to read the Bible for ourselves then we need to repent for not developing a prayer life. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm calling you, I charge you to trust the Lord with all your heart. Get right with God. Get in his presence. Get in his face. Get in the Bible. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you all truth. Jesus said, it's expedient that I go away, but I will send you the comforter. The Holy Spirit, he will guide you into all truth. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have resisted the Holy Spirit, repent and ask the Holy Spirit to fill you with his presence. Receive the Holy Ghost. Get filled and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you day by day because he is the one who has been sent by Jesus Christ to guide us into all truth without the Holy Ghost. There could be no truth. If you're in a church today and they don't preach about the Holy Spirit, they don't believe in the Holy Ghost, you need to get your hat. You need to get out of there. You need to find a place 
where the Holy Spirit has the freedom to operate in the lives of the people and in your life. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. I just thank God. I just thank God for this message. What is truth? We might continue a little bit in this area next week. Well, I thank God. And I want to share with you, ladies and gentlemen, be alert. Be alert. Don't trust the flakes and the fakes. Don't let some flake or some fake tell you what is true and what is not. Find out for yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, even though your best friend has a has a page on the social media and you follow that friend every day, if your friend is not telling the truth, you need to rebuke that friend and introduce that friend to the truth. Why follow a lying spirit to destruction? You say, but I'm saved. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, but if you're ignorant enough and stubborn enough to follow a lying spirit, how, how do you think God's going to let you into heaven? Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth. It is your responsibility to know the truth. It is your responsibility not to let Fox News give you the truth or CNN or any other media. It's your responsibility to know the truth. And ladies and gentlemen, the truth is in this book, this book, the word of God. Study it, study it, meditate on it. Don't let it leave you. Don't turn to the right or turn to the left. Trust the Lord with all your heart. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. Oh, thank God for this opportunity to share with you. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your message today. Thank you for blessing the people. Thank you, Father, for blessing the people. Thank you for Tamara. Thank you for uh, Wes. Thank you for Ray. Thank you for Marty's soul. Thank you for Elijah. Thank you for all of our friends all over the globe. We praise you, Father. Thank you for Andy Mack. We thank you for your word. Help us to know the truth. Let the truth set us free. Let the truth set us free. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are the spirit of truth. I thank you that you live inside of every believer. Rise up like rivers of living water. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And if you are listening today, wherever you are, no matter where you are in the world, you can be saved. If you would like to be saved, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell Jesus you believe he's the son of God. Tell him you thank him for dying on the cross for your sins. Ask him to come into your life to be your savior, your Lord, your God, and your king. And receive him and the gift of salvation. And I look forward to seeing you again on next Sunday. If you need to talk with me, you can call me at 404-205-1101. Or you can send me an email, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com. Or you can hit me up on my Facebook page. I have two Facebook pages. One is Leroy Carter and the other is Back to Basics Ministries Incorporated. Be so willing and so glad to talk with you, chat with you, have prayer with you. God bless you and have a great day. We're going to say goodbye first to our Facebook friends. Thank you for coming and thank you for being a part of this great ministry today. And then we're going to say goodbye to all of our other friends and ask you if you care. You can stay online and we can chat and we can chew. Hey, Ray, thank God for you, girl. Hope you're feeling better. All right.